And the globalists have absolutely set this group up, hundreds of thousands of operatives left the borders open to let them infiltrate. We're getting contacted, in fact, I forgot to tell you that, by high-level people. That's one reason they have the feds watching us, the bad feds, is they know a lot of good feds are aware of what's happening and have been exposing what's going on. But this is a crazy time to be alive right now. I'm going to go and finish a briefing for Facebook mentions, folks, and then people can find this feed at Infowars.com forward slash show with Joe Biggs and Anthony Gucciardi. But I'm going to throw it back to you, but I just normally would run around and say, see, I'm mad at myself, or you didn't cover something big, or why aren't we covering this? So I'll bitch at them or I'll bitch at myself. I dropped the ball today, barely mentioning this. We can't drop the ball on this. We have to expose what's happening. Even Breitbart's reporting they're letting Syrian refugees come into the U.S. illegally out of Mexico. So that's gone from being a conspiracy theory to confirmed. Back to the live transmission. Great job, guys. Anything you want to say, Anthony Gucciardi, the viewers? Well, I think it's really simple. Things are so insane that we forget the realistic grasp of where we are. I mean, when we have ISIS saying they're going to kill millions of people or hundreds of millions of people in a religious cleansing, that sounds so insane you don't even process it in your brain. Well, the well, government won't fight them. Well, most it makes Putin's no sense. To fight them. Well, we're bad. And months ago, they made fun of me for going into an opera Mexico to look for these bases that Judicial Watch reported on. The FBI even came out and said that that's a credible source of information, that that's very possible. They don't have the jurisdiction to go into Mexico and actually look. So they were counting on someone like me who could go in freely and look around to give them some intel. They just, they, they're not even going to do it. And everyone's coming out saying it's possible that you can come across the border. It's wide open. But you have the Democrats saying, oh, the border's fine. Let everybody across. No, there is a serious problem. Do, building a giant thing people in Germany that criticize it. Yeah. But and and now you've got Facebook, dissonance. you got you've got uh, Zuckerberg, Merkel all sitting there saying, "Hey, yeah, we're going to start monitoring Facebook to make sure that people aren't saying anything that could be seen as racist against these uh migrants coming across because, you know, we don't need that." That's but ridiculous. People, political correctness is not a suicide pact. Go ahead. People don't believe this because in their daily lives, nothing is being directly impacting them. So it's a cognitive dissonance of sorts. Like we're here freaking out, freaking out about this because we look at the news and read it. International Business Times. We have more International Business Times, CNN over there. All this stuff is real and being reported on. And we're actually looking at it, reading it. The average person isn't. So they're not freaking out. And they see people freaking out. And they just don't get it because it's pure cognitive dissonance. And I mean, it literally says in there, ISIS has... More capabilities than we think. This guy, this Western journalist, Saudi Arabia is not nukes and maybe giving it to him. Saudi Arabia is going crazy right now. I mean, there's a million things. Meanwhile, on the Pakistan-India border, there's troops that are ready to nuke each other at any time. It could happen in five seconds. The South Korea, North Korean border, they're already firing missiles across. North Korea fired missiles towards South Korea. At any time, there could be an explosion, but people don't even think about it. All right, you're going to break. I'm going to come finish up. Keep it up, guys. Great job. All right. Anyways, I was just coming in here to point out that's big news. We will be back with more, more craziness inside of the fourth hour of Overdrive of the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi with Joe Biggs, and we'll be back with what's coming up later on today in the nightly news and tomorrow on the show. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. This is the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and we're here with Joe Biggs. We just talked about some pretty insane news, and Alex popped in while doing a live stream on his Facebook mentions, which he's on Facebook. You can follow him, follow myself as well on my page. And he has something called Facebook mentions, which is where you can live stream. And it's, it's a really cool function. You should check it out. Anyway, so we were talking about ISIS and their plan to use nuclear weapons to religiously cleanse millions and millions of people. And Joe just mentioned a new story came out, and he wanted to highlight that. What, what's going on? All right, so there's a new article out of Infowars.com by Mikhail Thalen. Obama gave over 1,500 terrorists asylum in U.S. documents reveal. Now, documents obtained by Judicial Watch reveal that the Obama administration gave as many as 1,519 terrorists asylum in the U.S. in 2014. Now, according to the government watchdog, the administration let that many people in. Uh, before the Obama administration tweaked a federal law last year, these four nationals would have been banned from the country for supporting terrorist causes, Judicial Watch writes. But under the changes, the Security of Homeland Security has discretionary authority to waive certain grounds of that and to let people come in and stay and have asylum. So this fits in right with what we're talking about. The borders are open. And not only are the borders open, now we have the government allowing these terrorists to come in and gain asylum. And one of the things inside this uh, book I'm reading by Jurgen Toddenhofer, where he's talking about inside the uh, IS, he says he thinks the greatest threat would be people who are already in the other countries, not the ones mainly in Syria and Iraq, but the ones who've already dispersed and are already in the U.S., in the EU, somewhere over that way, waiting like a sleeper cell just to wait no attack. 
Right. It's an ideological sleeper cell. It's not like we know that they're affiliated with the group. It's an ideological change. Someone can join ISIS right now. Someone sitting right here could join ISIS. Right? No, I decided I'm going to join ISIS. I'm going to go blow something yeah. up. So that, of course, is the biggest issue. And all of this, like we were talking about before when Alex kind of came in here and did his Facebook stream, this has reached a point of insanity where I believe our simple human brains can't understand it anymore. I mean, think about it. For thousands of years, not only have we not have the, had the news hitting us with daily updates and the craziness of the world, we've really only had to focus on a small tribe, a tribe that has its own inner politics and infighting and kind of stupid stuff like that. But we've never had to think about, like, what's going on in Afghanistan? What's going on in Iraq? What's going on in the India-Pakistan border? What's going on in North-South Korea? What's going on in Texas, Pennsylvania, Kansas, Oklahoma, just everywhere around the world? All the geolocations all converging onto one point. And there's so many different hot zones of all these things that we would have never been able to understand or know about before that our human brain is thinking, gee, how do I possibly understand this? How do I understand ISIS taking nukes? To kill hundreds of well, most Americans are spoiled. You got to think most most Americans' daily struggle in life is their coffee machine breaking, or online, or cyber bullying, or you know someone fat shaming, or something like that. Or we've got petty things like this feminism stuff and all these other little things that we create so we can have something to bitch about and complain. All right, these people live every day in guerrilla warfare. And at the same time, they're getting their doctorates and becoming physicists and chemists and things like that while their homes are being bombed, while their families are being kidnapped, murdered, raped, beaten, tortured every day. People in America need to wake up and understand, guess what? There's a lot of bad things going on in this country, and you need to pull your head out of your butt because your daily struggle of trying to get a coffee and come into work on time or your Volvo or your new set of rims on your car is BS. Who cares? There are people out there who have to fight every day, literally, and at the same time have to fight to wake up to get to school, to get a degree, to do something. So when we go over and do stuff like that, we're not fighting you know, people who have no idea what's going on in the world. They have to deal with this every day and get an education. And you've seen it firsthand, very inspirational message. All our problems are relative. We really need to put it into perspective. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. Thanks for watching the Alex Jones Show fourth hour of Overdrive. Paul Watson is going to host the show tomorrow, and he's got some really exciting stuff he wasn't able to join us in this like segment but check it out tomorrow 11 a.m to 2 p.m central standard time thanks so much for watching